Welcome to Wellness Today. I'm Chanel Jones. After a relaxing and fun-filled self-care summer, it's time to welcome fall with open arms and get back to a routine. We'll learn how getting organized can help with our physical, mental, and emotional health and may surprisingly assist in adding some spontaneity to our day. Then we'll share tips for keeping kids and teens safe as they get back on the sports field. Plus, today contributor Stephanie Mansour shows us how to make stretching an everyday habit. And for many, it's the favorite part of fall, football season. We'll show you a team with a twist. Whether you're excited to bring back habits that worked for you last year or create something entirely new, join us to be inspired to get back to routine. Whether you've learned from the likes of Marie Kondo or the ladies of the home edit, getting things in order can feel good. But did you know it can be a helpful tool to ease the mind and calm the nerves and can even help you focus? According to the Mayo Clinic, decluttering often contributes to lowering stress. So we met some folks who shared their insights on what controlling the clutter does for their overall well-being. Take a look. Here you go, Mom. You. I do self-identify as a very organized person. I kind of just try to organize in a way that makes things make sense to myself and everybody else so that we can all kind of play a role. Jennifer Jessup is a Seattle area mom to four kids, ages seven, five, three, and one. Keeping things organized in her home has become a top priority for her in this stage of life. It's almost like everything around is screaming at me, like, put me away, or like, I, I need you to move me. So when everything is organized where it needs to be, it quiets that, and then I can just, I can just be. I think he wants to play with you, Cannon. I definitely find that if things are, in a sense, put away in a somewhat organized fashion, then I'm more of the fun mom. I'm not thinking about a thousand other things that need to be done, I can just be in the moment. Jen's emotional reaction to having her space organized doesn't surprise Jean Prominsky, a professional organizer who runs Seattle Sparkle. Jean hears from people like Jen all the time who are looking for ways to tame their cluttered spaces. When you are living in a place with a lot of clutter around you, it can be really distracting. It's really, really stressful. Jean's background as a glass blowing artist informed her passion for organizing. Glass is a very fragile, temperamental material, and you've got to be able to just reach down and grab the right tool at the right time. So there's a lot of planning and preparation that goes into glass that also goes into having an organized home. Jean recently published a coloring book called Color to Declutter to help get people in the right frame of mind for organizing their spaces and lives. I created a coloring book to help people get organized. It helps relax your mind. And when your mind is relaxed, then your external environment will be relaxed. If your mind is feeling chaotic, your external world is gonna reflect that. So by relaxing your mind, you are able to relax your environment. Although Jean offers a range of home organization services, certain jobs call for extra help. That's when she recommends her friend, Alan Regala, owner of Shelf Genie of Seattle, a company that retrofits existing cabinets to help people get more organized around the house. We'll design it so it's more efficient, so you can actually probably store more items in your kitchen than maybe you do now. Easy access to everything. Alan has a background in mechanical engineering and has had a lifelong passion for organization. This is one of my favorite ones here. Uh, we have a glide out shelf for our water bottles. Organization is huge for wellness. Your overall state of being it allows you to feel more joy in your world because you're not worried. I think you can go on the other end of the spectrum though and be too structured and everything being 100% um, perfect. Finding that right balance to be happy and to have a low stress you know, environment but still be productive and know where things are at. And once we do find that balance, organization has the potential to make us feel more fun, fire up a creative spark and make our days just a little bit more joyful. Now joining us to better understand the mental, emotional, and physical benefits of having an organized life is clinical psychologist, Dr. Jonathan Lasseter. Thank you for coming in today. Thank you so much for having me. I have to be honest, for years I've been talking about how I need to get organized, but I never really thought about the connection to the mental health benefits. I've always thought of it as just, you know, being organized is the right thing to do. But talk about the connection between mental health 
and being organized. Yes, so being organized has a lot of benefits for mental health. So I'm going to give you three. Okay. So one is less stress. Mm. When you are organized, you know what you're going to do, when you're going to do it. Mm -hmm. You can block out your time. And so then you're not thinking, oh, am I going to have time to do this? Sure. Oh, am I going to have time to do that? You know when. And so it decreases your stress. Mm. So also better sleep. Okay. So when it comes to sleep, again, if we're not organized, we tend to leave things for later and we end up and it's 11 o'clock. You're right. We still have things to do, yep. right? And then I lay down and my mind is racing. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. not only are you getting to bed later, once you're in bed, you're not sleeping as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. So when you're organized, better sleep. Mm -hmm. Also, better health. So you can plan your meals better, which better diet, that right? That makes sense. Okay. And also exercise yeah. and things like that. So better health. So we know it. You know when the doctor tells you to do something, but it's another thing to actually try to implement it mm -hmm. from a physical or from a clinical perspective. Mm -hmm. Are there first steps that we can do to try to create a new healthy routine? Yeah. So as you know, I'm a clinical psychologist. So I always tell my clients who are struggling with this, start small, mm -hmm. right? So what may be small to you, though, may be large to someone else. So it just depends on the person. But start small. And I always say, make a smart goal. S is for specific. So you want to be specific. So instead of saying, I'm going to work out, how are you going to work out, right? Mm -hmm. You want it to be measurable, right? So how long are you going to work out, okay. right? Action-oriented, realistic, mm -hmm. and time-oriented. Give yourself a time limit mm -hmm. to do that goal. Say, I'm going to do that before lunch. I didn't realize that being organized could help with being spontaneous. Yes. To me, it almost sounds counterintuitive, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm thinking, oh, I don't need to be organized. I just want to be free. <laughs> but if you're organized, tell me that connection. Yeah. So if you're organized, then it frees you up. Because, mm -hmm. again, remember all that stress? You don't have that. Mm -hmm. Your mind can be at peace. Mm -hmm. So you not only schedule the task you have to do, but schedule blocks of time to be free and really be free. Really Wait, schedule your freeness, yes, so to speak? Yes, yes, yeah? because it, then it frees you up. So you're not saying, oh, I can't do this because then I, uh, you know, I'm going to run up against this time block or I'm not going to know when, mm -hmm. you know. So you sense. know when you're going to have your free time. Mm -hmm. So this also becomes something you can look forward to. But go down rabbit holes, explore, imagine. But being, having a uh, schedule helps you do all of that. Is it possible to be a kind of person or is it possible to take it too far? Like are there warning signs <laughs> if someone's too rigid, if you will, of with course, their organization? Of course. So the warning signs of being too rigid anxiety. Mm. You ever meet those people? Absolutely. Right? Where they one thing goes wrong. And, and they, like, they, can't, and deal. they can't deal. Yeah. That is a telltale sign right okay. there. Right? Okay. So if anxiety comes about and they just can't let it go, mm -hmm. also if they can't move on to their day. So, mm. okay, so I didn't do this, so I have to do this before I can do it, and now they're behind. Okay? When the routine starts to become a hindrance and starts to create the anxiety that's meant to alleviate, you're in trouble. It's so interesting. There's a line in there somewhere. I don't know what it is because I also know that you've talked about the fact that if you are organized, it can help if you have existing mental health conditions, maybe like ADHD or anxiety or depression. But if you're too far on the other end of the spectrum, it causes anxiety. Yes. Where is that line? It's all about balance. And again, that's going to be different for every person. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that I work with my clients about. Where is the balance? So I always think about Function. Are you able to function in your life? Are you able to get the things done that you want to get done? And if you are, then that's where your balance is. Mm, and if not, then seek help. Yeah, yeah. which is why we have folks like exactly. you. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Thank you for all of your insights, Dr. Lassiter. Thank you. Coming up, tips for keeping the kids healthy as we fall back into fall sports season. And later, these high school girls are scoring touchdowns in a league of their own. All that and more just ahead on Wellness Today. Part of getting back into routine is back to school and back to school sports. So if your kids have taken the summer off, you might be worried about them diving back in too hard, too fast and getting hurt. Joining us now is Dr. Jordan Metzel. He is a sports medicine physician at the Hospital for Special Surgery. And he is going to talk to us about what you can do to help your athlete avoid injuries 
and what to do if, goodness forbid, an injury occurs. Welcome, Dr. Metzl. Thank you. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. So let's dig right in. I mean, getting back into after-school sports, there are some kids who stay active over the summer, other kids not so much. So as parents, what can we do if we don't want our kids to get injured or go too hard too fast? Yeah, definitely. Say. So uh, yeah, violating the rule of two is too much too quickly. And mm. uh, back to school is a time, it's really our busiest time of the year in sports really? medicine by far. Oftentimes, people are less active in the summer with organized things. They may mm -hmm. go to camp. They're are less, you know, less formally active in sport, and then they jump right back into school sports. Mm. And that disconnect between the body I kind of had over the summer and then yeah. jumping back into real sports uh, can be a real shock to the system. And so we, we really look to kids to work on, you know, doing a lot of preventive strengthening so they can stay healthy during the sport. And right now, particularly as school sports are kicking back up, and the real thing, we've been kind of on a, a lesson schedule for yeah. the last couple of years. Yeah. So now we're back into like real official, the whole thing, fans, parents, kids, all sports going, which is wonderful for kids. Mm -hmm. But the downside of that is their bodies may not be totally up to it. So you got to make sure they're building back in slowly and building up enough strength. Hopefully over the summer, they were doing some strength training and conditioning too. It's so important. I think we just assume, oh, kids are kids. Let them just run around, let them go out there. And then when we talk about stretching, we think about adults, but clearly kids, it's important for them too. I I keep reading about creating a healthy sports environment for kids. What does that even mean? I have two, three athletes, and I don't know what that means. Well, here's what I got to tell you on that. So okay. basically, sports should be, for kids, the best time of the day. Like, they should be looking forward to doing their sport. Unfortunately, we've seen... You know, a whole trend towards specialization. Oh, you're a pretty good soccer player. You should play soccer year round. You're a pretty good baseball player. You should play baseball year round. And younger and younger, kids are getting shunted towards these specialized sports. And oftentimes that gets quite serious. And sometimes it's very healthy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not healthy. So when I talk about a healthy sports experience, I mean, is your kid smiling, looking forward to going? They might, they may not make it to Major League Baseball or the NBA or NFL. Most kids don't mm. even make it to college for sport. But we want to make sure we're giving them tools to have a healthy kind of experience. And they want, we want them to be like you. You look forward to exercising Absolutely. all the time because Absolutely. you have a really positive experience about that. So we want to make sure they're smiling. And you know, there's a lot of factors that go into that. You know, my kids play soccer. And there are people who clearly, even my husband, I have to watch because he played soccer. So he assumes the boys are going to play soccer, right? And so I think parents have to be careful to make sure maybe their child actually really wants to play that sport. How, can you, how do you know if a sport is right for a child. Well, it's interesting. I have this discussion with parents all the time in my office. Mm. And, you know, first of all, there's no such thing as a right sport. If your kid likes it, they're smiling, they're having fun, let them do it. Okay. But definitely there are some sports where as they get more serious about it, um, you know, they may get injured more often if they don't have the right body for the right sport. And, mm. the, and sports like you may think like ballet, for example, if you have a really nice turnout in your hips, um, you're made to be able to dance ballet maybe, but if you're trying to force that turnout from the That's floor because you don't turn out very yeah. well, you know, you can make it as a small kid, but as you get further up in ballet, you start to get knee problems and hip problems. So the thing I tell parents is if your kid is injured more than kind of 10, 15% of the season, if they have a lot of aches and pains way more than other kids, mm. it may be time to talk about Am I in the right sport? Um, and most importantly, are they having fun? That's really interesting. I've never even thought about that. And what about, like, if your kids are still growing? Are there some injuries um, or ways injuries in adults differ from injuries in kids? That's a great question. So, uh, basically, kids' bodies are, they're not just like small adults. Their bodies are growing, and in their bones, they have these cartilage growth plates. Now, these are plates of cartilage in the bone. And as they start to grow, these, these cartilage plates turn into bone and kind of like a brick. They lay down layers of brick on top of each other, and that's how the bone gets longer. So if you roll your ankle and you're 16, you've sprained your ankle. But if you roll your ankle and you're 9 or 10, you've fractured your growth plate, and it looks exactly the same, but we treat them very differently. The growth plate fracture is more serious. Sometimes it needs a cast or a boot, and we that's keep them out of activity. So the key thing for parents is recognizing that if something you know, keeps hurting, you want to definitely get it checked out. I was just going to ask you how you can tell if an injury requires medical attention or if you can just watch your kid and you know take care of it at home. It's interesting. There's kind of two categories of injury. The acute traumatic injury, like it happens right away, I twisted my ankle, mm -hmm. I'm limping off the field. You don't wonder if you had that one. For those, if it's crooked, if it's swollen, come bring it in right yeah. away. If it keeps bugging them, you want to get it checked out. But the other ones, the repetitive use injuries, I'm playing baseball and my elbow hurts because from throwing or I'm a gymnast mm -hmm. and my back hurts. For those, if pain is changing how you do your sport, meaning I can't throw the ball right, I can't do back handsprings because my back hurts, you want to get that checked out as well. All right, last but not least, this is an interesting question. I feel like somebody's been spying on me. Let's say you're a parent and you're watching the game on the sidelines and your child gets hurt. So I learned the hard way that you're not supposed to run out on the field. 
<laughs> but it was like it was my child. And he was like, Mom, you know, and he pushed me back. But is there a line? I mean, some, you know, and he was fine. So that's when I learned, okay, let me let the coach handle well, it. So basically, uh, you know, there are built-in kind of ways that we take care of these injuries. You know, usually kids are pretty darn resilient yeah, yeah. and they get up and move around. You know, if there is a designated medical person on the field, you know, let them go do their job. Um, you don't want to be the overbearing person looking yeah. over their shoulder and running out there. Um, but, you know, obviously yeah. your parental instincts kick in as well. All right. Dr. Metzler, so you're so solid. And he's doing this and he still has patients. So he's got to run back <laughs> and take care of the patients. You're just doing that. You're such a giver. Thank you so much. Great to see you. So cheers to all of you for a fun, safe, and healthy sports season ahead. All right. Coming up, add some relaxation to your day with five minutes of stretching. And then later, Donna Farazan is going to kick off football season with the New York Jets. Stay with us. Welcome back. Even though settling back into a routine brings about a sense of control, it can also feel overwhelming and exhausting. Fitness expert Stephanie Mansour is here to help you unwind each day by demonstrating a few exercises to improve your flexibility and help you ease into or out of your day. Hey everyone, I'm your trainer and coach Stephanie Mansour and it's time to take a deep breath. You know, it's hard getting back in the swing of things and as we head into fall, Today, we're going to slow it down and relax with this full body stretch. I'll guide you through these exercises that you can do starting on our knees. So you don't even have to stand up like I am right now. This is going to be a perfect way to wind down before bed or just a great way to add some flexibility into your daily routine. So we're going to come down onto the mat. And as a certified yoga instructor, I like to take off my shoes and socks and really get into the flow. So go ahead and join me if you want. And then we're going to start kneeling on our mat. So coming onto your knees here and sticking your legs out behind you. We're going to inhale, reach the arms out to the side and up, lifting the chest. And then exhale through the nose as you place the hands down onto the mat. We're going to inhale here into a cat and cow. And exhale to draw your navel in towards your spine. Good. Let's do that one more time. Inhaling, lifting the chest, shoulders back. And exhale, abs in, stretching between the shoulder blades and along the spine. From here, we're going to step forward into a low lunge, placing the hands on the opposite sides of the feet. We're going to inhale here, lifting the chest. And you can also place your hands on your thighs if that's more comfortable. And then exhale, fold forward. From here, we're going to shift back onto the heel. And you can flex the foot if you want, coming upright if that's more comfortable. Or if you're more flexible, you can place your hands onto the mat. Take a deep breath in. And then exhale, come forward into that low lunge again. Inhaling here. And exhaling, leaning back, flexing the foot, stretching the hamstring. Good. One more time. Inhaling, shifting forward, stretching that front leg's hip flexor. And exhale, folding forward, dropping your chin to your chest. Good. We're going to come back to center, and then we're going to switch legs. So coming onto your hands and knees again, and then stepping the opposite foot forward in between the hands. Scooching the back leg back, inhaling, lifting your chest. And exhale, folding forward, flexing that foot. Good. And again, you can come up tall if that's more comfortable for you, or you can lean forward at your waist. Inhaling, walking forward with the hands, lifting the chest. And exhale, flexing the foot, rounding the spine as you shift back. One more time, inhaling through the nose, opening the chest, bringing the shoulders back. And exhale, flexing the foot, shifting back and then come back to the starting position. And great job. You can do this routine in the morning to start your day, in the middle of the day for a stretch break, or in the evening to unwind after a long day. Thanks, Stephanie. Just five minutes a day to loosen things up. I think I can do that, and you can do that too. Plus, it's never too late to get moving. Join the Start Today community on Facebook or sign up for our newsletter to find others just like you who are getting stronger each day. All right, when we come back, Donna gets a lesson in how to play flag football with the New York Jets and the state champion high school girls team. That's just ahead.
Welcome back to Wellness Today. Football season is here, and 17.1 million fans are preparing to watch their favorite NFL team try to make it to the Super Bowl. 47% of those fans are women, but as of 2022, not one female will play in the 32-team league. That doesn't mean you shouldn't count women out, though. High school girls around the country are finding a new way to try the sport through flag football in leagues of their own. Today's Donna Farazan caught up with girls from the Irvington High School flag football team in New Jersey and the New York Jets to learn a thing or two about the sport. Ready, set, go. Strength, resilience, perseverance. Junior year, we lost in the championship, and I couldn't deal with that. So next season came, I was like, I had to win the championship. And not only did we win the championship, we went undefeated, no loss. Meet number one, quarterback Janasia Wilson. Number 17, wide receiver safety, Samaya Dixon. Number 14, wide receiver running back, Samaya Hill. Part of Irvington High School's girls flag football team, the 2022 New Jersey State Champions. I kind of feel like I have the city on my back, like it's your responsibility to deliver, which I mean like, we deliver. You deliver. We delivered. Motivating younger generations. I live with my little brothers and they're nothing but always by my side. They look up to me like, I go to practice, they're like, can I come, can I come? They want to play football, so I will go outside, play catch with them. My little sister will want to come and sit at flag football practices just to see her sister play the sport that she loves. When I come in the house, it's like state champ, state champ. So it's like that kind of energy, just like, it like motivates you. Sibling motivation, a theme that rings true with Jets players Quincy and Quinnen Williams. The way I started playing football was we got in an argument. So I was a swimmer. So I told him, like, one day my gold medals are going to be worth more than his tackles. <laughs> Come find out. His sacks are worth more than my gold medals right now. And I started playing football as I kept going, and I was just like, you know, I can really make this a thing. That's amazing. So your love of family was really what drove your love of football. Yeah. Yeah. And I have a sister. It's three boys and one girl. And she used to always play football with us, like, in the backyard so it could be two on two. What does she think of your involvement with the program? Well, I was at the football game, and I had FaceTime, and she was like, man, I would have been dumb if, I, if they had that when I was young. An opportunity offered by the New York Jets and Nike Girls High School Flag Football League. That grew from eight teams to over 40 in just one year. What is your hope for the future of this program? I just hope more and more girls get a chance to display their abilities. Like, we get a chance to display our abilities every single Sunday. Now there's not a question on like, how do I get started? Uh, who do I talk to? With inspiration, I had to give it a try myself. What are the basic rules for playing flag football? Run. <laughs> Run. Yeah, ready, set, go. Go, go, go. We have, we have, we have. running like you can't block the defender from getting your flag so even if you finish your route just keep running yes. on defense if you're standing still that's the problem oh, she fumbled. wasn't my fault this time i say you always focus on the next play you know not every yes, play is going to be perfect play. if you mess up just go to the next and make it better Grab basket. next play oh <laughs> next play you can't go back in time. You gotta move forward. Right? Moving forward as part of the sisterhood. So you're one of us now, so you get a shirt. Oh. Period. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God, dude, you gotta do a chant with us. This is amazing. Pretty good. Yeah. yeah. You gotta let us know how you feeling now. Okay, how, you, right? how you feeling? Pretty good. How are you feeling? The popularity and success of flag football continues to grow with the support of the NFL, and they are hoping to have it recognized as an official Olympic sport in years to come. Thank you for joining me as we get back to routine. I hope you're inspired to get organized, keep the kids healthy as they get back on the field, and find some time for you to stretch or try something new during this season. I'm Chanel Jones, and we'll see you next time on Wellness Today.
Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Find your favorite recipes, celebrity interviews, uplifting stories, shop our favorite deals, and so much more with the Today app. Download it now.